Hi, this is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils Health Matters and Living the Wholesome Way. <coughs> and we are on week 40, 41 or 42. I don't know. I'll put it in the comments. Anyway, we are on, I'm going to say week 41, day two of, hold on, Caleb, can you get him an apple, please? Week 40. Day two of our positive, peaceful affirmations that we are doing every day, Monday through Friday. We are following Dr. Susan Lawton's book, Positive Peaceful Growth Calendar, that you could buy at Aroma Tools or Oil Life. And, and um, if you love positive affirmations or you love music therapy, if you love essential oils and aromatherapy, I think this is going to be one book that you're going to love. It's super simple in its format, but I think as we follow what it suggests and as we concentrate on those positive affirmations, we can make profound changes in our lives. The affirmation for the entire week is, I renew my vision board. Well, yesterday as I was talking about my vision board, I've definitely done vision boards many times in the past, but I hadn't done one recently. So I I hopped on yesterday and spent a good deal of time um, dreaming and thinking and brainstorming on what do I want and then and then putting it all down onto paper. So I don't have very many pictures on my vision board yet, but I do have a lot of concepts and a lot of ideas, a lot of words a lot of where I want my life to go. So there's no right or wrong way to do a vision board. Obviously, the more visual you can make it, the better. And I'm going to be working on that today again. We'll see how my vision board takes shape over the week. Have you been working on your vision board? That's something that I would definitely um, suggest that we all do just so that we can keep our goals in front of us. Now, as I was thinking, well, I didn't have a place where every single one of my goals was, was I could see every single one of my goals or, or the vast majority of my goals. I definitely had places in my home that I always used as a place of um, a visual reminder of what, where I wanted, of my goals and where I wanted to go next. So on the back of one of my cupboards, I have how much we owe on our house. And, and the payoffs, and I always write, okay, this is how much we owe, this is um, the day I paid, and this is then again how much I owe. And we are really trying to get our house paid off by our anniversary, our 30th anniversary, which is um, August 25th, so next month. Now, is it gonna happen? I don't know. Like, if things keep going the way that we think they will, then yeah, I think it can happen. You never know what the future is going to bring, but I love having, it felt so fulfilling for me to be crossing off the, um, well, maybe not crossing off, but, but did I cross off the old ones? I don't think so, but writing new pay, the, the new payment amount and just seeing that go down. Now, I started that habit when my husband um, had graduated from law school and we had this enormous um, law school debt, right? And I start, put it on the back of one of my cabinets that I op opened often, and and just so I can see, oh, this is my debt, and and every single time, it just felt so fulfilling to see that debt start dwindling down. And the, the interesting thing is, the more the debt started dwindling down, the more we we chucked money at it. Like, okay, we have. This And we track that both on a graph, right? And then we graph paper. I love graph paper because I love filling in things and coloring off things. And it's just an easy way. I can see um, every single day how our business is going up or going down. Um, 
and how we're helping people. So on a graph. And then we also have like little, little um, paper chains that we put up in our house around the 15th because we're trying to make sure that we're, we're um, spreading how wonderful essential oils are in certain parts of the country. And so we have your house just so that just so that the whole family can kind of get involved in them and we can see progress especially on some of these big goals like paying off our house or credit card debt or whatever these are huge goals and so if we're not tracking them in in some type of little tiny increments it can be very easy to see think we're not making any progress but we are um, anyway, I'm all about the visual reminders. So is there some type of visual reminder that you want to make yourself today? And then it can be, it can be totally simple, like using graph paper or paper chains or just a paper where you write things down. Um, Benjamin Franklin to keep like a, I'm going to call it an index card, but just like a little piece of paper in his, um, pocket where he had good habits that he was trying to establish and bad habits that he was trying to break. And he would, he would kind of keep in his pocket. How did I do? Did I? Anyway, so whatever you use to be visual reminders, um, my suggestion is to get some type of visual reminder because um, when we can see things, when we can see things um, physically created, when it's not just in our mind, it helps us get faster to our goals. Okay. The affirmation, so the affirmation for the week is reviewing our vision boards and making them if we haven't, or updating them if we haven't done that yet. The affirmation for today is I update my vision baby's first year. Um, some people love to do it when, and when they hit, hit major anniversary dates as a couple, whatever it is. Let's be creating those visual reminders of the joy that we've had in life too and our successes. So we're going to be updating our vision boards, yes, and, we're, and then we're going to be updating something that shows a visual reminder of the joys and the successes that we've had along the way in our life. I remember when I and um, one of my daughters, Priscilla, she wanted to go to a dance camp and it was in another state and we're like, and we didn't really know the organization that she was going with. And so we're like, the only way we're going to let you go is if you take your younger brother with you, um, who's just, you know, two years younger and, and then you guys can kind of take care of each other. And I all feel, I'll feel better about that. And my son named Marshall, he did not want to go at all. He's like, I don't dance. I don't want to dance. I'm not into this. He went and he had the time of his life and it sparked one of his, one of his greatest joys. He loves dancing 
Um, well, obviously connecting with friends and connecting with family and connecting with God, of, of course those are joys too. But he loves dancing and it brought this light and sparkle to his eyes. And how many times do we perhaps lose something that we might just absolutely love in life because we're too afraid to do it or it's too far out of our comfort zone or we just don't have the energy or just don't want to do it right now. So all of that to say that I hope that for myself that when those opportunities come that I try them. And I, even when it comes to playing a new game, so we're, you know, we're all in this pandemic right now, right? And, and, um, my, my children were like, we have this pandemic game. And to me, I'm like, a game about a pandemic? Like, that sounds really sad. I don't even know if I want to play that. And it kind of sounded even like a little boring to me, but they brought it over. It was so exciting. The game was so exciting. Um, so like let's do and it wasn't it wasn't at all sad because we were all around the board all trying to um cure diseases and stop um stop outbreaks and and eradicate diseases anyway it was really really a fun and pretty intense game i guess it depends on how you play it but we played it pretty intensely so um if there's something new that you want to try or maybe even that you don't want to try try it you know, it might it might spark a new interest, might spark a new love. So, and then and then sticking on your your achievement board or achieve, into your achievement book or journal about it when you've done it, um, and then put something else on your vision board to do. Like, let's all have bucket lists and vision boards and journals and and things that we love. Okay, the diffuser blend uh, that we're diffusing the whole entire week is two drops of frankincense, which is the king of oils, the oil of truth and two drops of sandalwood which is the oil of sacred devotion and then two drops of grapefruit essential oil a super uplifting oil and an oil of the oil of honoring our bodies and today we're going to be talking about the emotional aspects of frankincense essential oil so the first thing you need to know about frankincense is that it grows in very harsh environments in Yemen, Amman, and the Horn of Africa. A very, it grows in very deserty environments. Now the oil comes from the resin of the tree. So what happens is they, they cut these trees or score them, however you wanna say that, and this beautiful resin oil comes out. And what, it, what the job of that resin oil is, is to protect and to help that tree heal. Well, um, so people around the world knew that that these this frankincense had so many medicinal um, attributes to it. In fact, it was one of the first commodities that we know of that had that was so vastly treated that it actually had a trail, a, a travel route known um, in the ancient world, and it was called the Frankincense Trail because so many people wanted to get frankincense. Most people know about frankincense because it was one of the three gifts given to the baby Jesus, um, gold and myrrh in the other two gifts, and ancient Egyptians used it in the embalming process and in cosmetic face masks. And in the ancient world, it was, it was very highly prized and almost worth its weight in gold. Frankincense is is good for so many things physically, but also so many things um, emotionally. And that's one of the reasons why it's called the king of oils. Not just because it was given to the king, you know, the Christ child, but because it, it's just so good for so many things. So frankincense has been used in um, by religions for about 3,000 years. And we know it comes from the frankincense tree
other people, we remember how I said that frankincense and myrrh were two of the oils that were given to the baby Jesus. So a lot of people like to think of frankincense as the protective oil, as the fathering oil, and myrrh as the nurturing oil, the very the a mothering oil. And together, these frankincense myrrh were frankincense and myrrh were very very good together. Frankincense um, is a beautiful oil to diffuse or put on. Frank Can someone pull me the frankincense, Caleb? Frankincense oil is a beautiful oil to put on or diffuse when you feel like you need to be protected. Whether that's a protected, you know, having a better immune system, or whether that's just being a protected from darkness or from, I don't know, emotional toxicity. It's a beautiful oil to diffuse in times when you want to feel a little bit more protected. Frankincense oil can help reduce stress reactions and negative emotions. So you can you can diffuse it, you can just take the bottle and you can smell it. You can put two, two to five drops in like a quarter cup of Epsom salts, take a bath. That's gonna be a beautifully relaxing, relaxing bath. Thank you, honey. Okay, so, um, and then another way that you can take frankincense essential oil is you can put it under your tongue. Now, it, it's gonna taste like a tree because it comes from a tree oil, right? But, um, and I'm, I guess before I do this, let me tell you um, one thing that I would say. I would say the only, when you're, when it comes to ingesting oils, and I actually like, um, I actually like to ingest frankincense and essential oil by just putting a couple drops into a glass of water and drinking it that way. I, I love just sipping on that um, throughout the day. And I don't know, I just like the taste of it in water. Um, but, and when I tell you you can use essential oils internally, I need to give you a little bit of a warning. And that's that not all essential oils on the market are created the same, right? It's um, so much dep depends on where the, the plants are grown and how they're harvested and how they are um, not manufactured, but how they are processed. And so doTERRA essential oil is really the only oil that I would ever recommend ingesting, and here is why. It's because they third party test every single batch of oil. So doTERRA as a company is gonna be running its own test. Is this oil pure? Does it have any contaminants in it? Um, just making sure it's not adulterated, but they also hire a third party com company to test all their essential oils every single batch, not just like every 100th batch or every fifth batch, but no, they're gonna be testing every single batch of essential oils. And um, you can go to a site called Source to You, and the, doTERRA actually puts a batch number on the on each bottle of oil. So you can go to a site called Source to You and type in your batch number, right? And then you can see every single test that's been done on your bottle of essential oils and all of the results. Like what other country, sorry, what other company does this? What other company is this? put a drop right underneath your tongue. So I would say you could do a drop like in the morning or in the afternoon. I actually have like these dropper bottles um, that you can buy, you know, at Aroma Tools uh, or um, Oil Life. And they, um, so you can just kind of unscrew the drop of this cap and then you can put a dropper cap on just so that you can make sure that, yeah, you're just going to get one. But it's okay because like two or three drops is not going to hurt you at all. But I would say one drop of frankincense oil in the morning, one top, um, drop of frankincense oil at night. It's just going to be beautifully um, beneficial to the whole system. So, um, frankincense is amazing for reducing anxiety and nervous tension. So, you can diffuse it in times of stress or fear. It's very good for people who are afraid of death 
or afraid of change or who have suffered. It's a beautiful oil also to diffuse. <coughs> Caleb, can you get me some water, please? It's a beautiful oil also to diffuse in times um, when people have lost a loved one and they're mourning. It can help us process those, um, those emotions, but also reminding, also beautifully reminding us that this life is not the only life. Like the God who created us, as soon as we die, we are taken back to his presence. And thank you so much. Anyway, so... on your feet. Your feet um, have reflexology points for all of the different systems in your body. It also that can help us stay more open-minded, more more looking at, oh, maybe there's not only one way to do things. What are some other options? Maybe we're not stuck here. Let's get a lot of people brainstorming or let's, you know, go to God and pray and let's figure out a way under or over or through the obstacles that we find in life. Frankincense is great to use in times when you're meditating or when you're praying. And it's been used in religions around the world for um, millennia for this purpose. Frankincense promotes healthy cognitive function, which can help us see the cause and the effect. So if you have people who tend to do something and then they tend to blame all their own, their problems on someone else, or um, they're like, oh my gracious, I don't even know how I got in this position. Right? Frankincense could be a great essential oil to use in times like that so that people are like, you know what, life just is, isn't just happening to me. I make choices and there are consequences, and, and which makes me so I'm not a victim. It makes me so I'm an active participant in my life and because I'm not a victim, I can make changes. If there are causes of, and effects, and if I got myself into this condition, I can get myself out, right? Okay, so frankincense. Um, remember how I said it was so protective? It's a beautiful oil to feel like if you're lonely, if you're feeling neglected, or if you're feeling separated from the world. So let me just say those words again. If you're feeling lonely, if you're feeling separated or if you're feeling neglected from the world or from people, it's a beautiful oil. It almost feels like, yeah, when you diffuse it, there comes a sense first and friends who want to be there for us if we would let them, if we would just reach out, right? Just say what we need. Frankincense, it can help relieve um feelings of bitterness or impatience or irritability. So not only can it bring good feelings in, but it can help us purge the feelings that we just don't really want anymore. And is, is um, an essential oil just gonna be the magic, I don't know, can you just take it, diffuse an essential oil and is that gonna be the magic wand to help you be less irritable or less angry? Well, maybe in a way, but no, you're going to still have those things that irritate you and make you angry. So, but for instance, can ground us, 
can help us relax, can help us realize, you know, we're not going to die just because these things are happening. Um, you know, let's just say, I don't know, whatever irritated you, you know, today, you're not going to die over it. Okay. So let's just calm down a little bit and let's figure out how to solve things. And frankincense, because it's such a common oil, can help in that. It can help in, hey, why, why am I so angry? What keeps happening over and over again that perhaps or, that we need to address, right? That we definitely need to address. Because if we're getting angry over and over again, we need to address something in our lives. We need to make some changes. And frankincense can help us calm down and realize that. Frankincense can help us open up to gratitude and thankfulness. Just seeing how wonderful life is. There's so much of media today. Oh, life is bad. Because why? Why bad stories sell, right? Um, and plus, I've done a lot of study on this too. The human condition, um, our human mind is just um, almost geared to, to remember the bad things so that we don't go into the painful situations again. So we're probably going to remember a lot more bad than we do good, even though we might have a lot more good in our lives. So frankincense, it can help us relax and really open our eyes and look around to see all of our incredible blessings to share. I was looking at a comic the other day, and the comic basically said that 2020 was just such a horrible year so far, right? And... I, I would agree in one part. We have had a lot of major issues um, hit the world. really are still happening. The sun, we have a beautiful sunrise every morning. We have a beautiful sunset. We have the stars and the moon and the trees and the flowers and beautiful food. Thank, so thankful for all of the things that we really do have in our life. And frankincense can help remind us of that. Frankincense can help us quit worrying about all of the little problems in life and remember again we're not all, we're not this in this for ourselves so together we can get through things frankincense is a beautiful oil to choose when you're trying to work on mindfulness trying to be staying present in the moment trying to enjoy life a little bit more frankincense because it is so relaxing and grounding it can help people who tend to have a um a tendency to lie and to hide their feelings and to hide who they really are and frankincense can help them realize can help them relax again and realize you know what it's time to speak the truth maybe it's time to come clean on a few things and make amends maybe it's time to let people see to quit hiding our light quit hiding how awesome we really are living more authentically. Maybe it's time to um, be more authentic on our daily struggles. Everyone has them, right? Maybe it's time to be more authentic on our daily struggles. And so when people say, hey, how are you doing? We can say, you know what? Today was actually a really bad day. I had some really hard things happen to me today. And and just being, or maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm suffering from depression. It's time to let that the, the people who care about me know that. Maybe I have phobias and fears that hit me every day. It's time to get help with that, right? It's time to let other people know us more so that we can all love each other more and all help each other more. And as we live more authentically, we allow other people in our lives to be like, just, just take a deep breath and just say, you know what? I don't have to be perfect either. I don't have to be perfect to be loved. I don't have to be perfect to be included. I don't have to be perfect to be worth 
worth something, worth worth a lot. God loves me even though I'm not perfect, and so can so do other people. We don't have to be perfect. Anyway, so it can help take away that need to lie and deceive that some people have or to hide. Because this can help because it's so relaxing. It can help um, open up communication between people, help us relax and be able to hear hard conversations that people are saying, and help other people relax and let us know that when we're, um, it can help remind us that when we're addressing the issue, we're not attacking the person. We're only addressing issues because we love people and we want to make things better. Okay. Frankincense. Remember how I said that frankincense was like the father in oil and myrrh was like the mother in oil? So if you have, if you, if you have prejudices against males, if you have um, hurts, from And we can accept that. Okay. Frankincense is a beautiful oil. They say when in doubt, choose frankincense. So if you're working through an emotional issue and you're like, I don't even know what essential oil can help with this, go ahead. Um, get a frankincense and try it. In fact, frankincense is a beautiful oil to add to any blend. It just brings in... Um, a protective, a fatherly, a um, a beautiful oil, a beautiful constituent to whatever other scent you're diffusing. Okay, and we've already kind of mentioned so um, how it can be great for when you're reading your scriptures or saying your prayers. Just a beautiful oil to diffuse for that. Okay, some of the negative emotions that. Frankincense can um, help with is if you're feeling abandoned, spiritually disconnected, feeling distant from fathers, whether it's your heavenly father or your earthly father, feeling unprotected, feeling a spiritual darkness, or just feeling like something is out of alignment in your life. And the positive properties that frankincense can help bring in is feeling enlightened, feeling loved, feeling protected. Um having a greater peace in the wisdom that you have and the wisdom that you're getting from God, feeling more discerning, feeling more spiritually open, and then feeling more connected to um, our father figures, Heavenly Father, our own fathers, and even even um, having a healthier view of men. Okay, so those are some of the beautiful benefits of frankincense essential oil. Just reminding everyone that the diffuser blend of the week is two drops of frankincense, which is the king of oils of the oil truth. Um, two drops of sandalwood essential oil, which is the oil of sacred devotion. And two drops of grapefruit essential oil, which is the oil of um, appreciating and loving our bodies. The, the song for the entire week is, I hope you dance. And the affirmation for the, today is, I update my vision board as I complete my steps. And the, the affirmation for the entire week is, I renew my vision board. Okay, this is Suzanne Williams with Essential Oils Health Matters and Living the Wholesome Life, reminding us that I know we have this amazing power within us, with God, to make every day a great day. Bye-bye.